Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Fish on. <laughs> Let me just grab the net. How's that? Last fishing. If you haven't done it, you'll absolutely love it. Let's have a look at this one. So, we've come down to the south coast today to do a bit of wrasse fishing, which is something in the summer, I like to target different species throughout the year, and in the summer, I love wrasse fishing. It makes up for the perch fishing, which I do in the winter, and boy, does it make up for it. Wrasse, pound for pound, fight. You can't even put words on it. They're absolutely incredible creatures. They live in the rocks and the kelp, and they absolutely test your tackle to the maximum. So today we're using the new floating lures as well. When I first, first saw them, I absolutely knew they were gonna be awesome for wrasse. And I think proof is in the pudding. But straight away, we've got this beautiful wrasse there. And I think you can see that he loved that. So unhooking the wrasse, never use your fingers because their teeth, I'll show you in a minute, their teeth are something else. So just gently turn it out like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can you see those teeth? Never try and do that. I've handled hundreds and hundreds of wrasse, so I'm used to them. But if you get trapped in those fingers there, it's just as dangerous as a pike. So you need to be ever so careful of them. Beautiful fish though, absolutely beautiful. Okay, easiest way of putting a wrasse back without having to get down near the water is to use the net. Turn it inside out. And then you don't have to risk getting close to the edge and slipping in on wet, weedy rocks. So, wrasse fishing. Different from freshwater fishing, because we're out at the sea, okay? And it can be a little bit daunting for some people, but in the summertime, there's no place or species I'd rather be and targeting. Absolutely fantastic fun. Now, it can be daunting, but it shouldn't be. What it is, is stepped up perch fishing. So maybe on the canals, you might be using one to eight gram rods, or you might be using, you know, five to 10, that sort of things. And you're, and you're going for perch in the, you know, two ounces up to a couple of pounds, maybe three pounds. Well, when you're, when you're out on the big reservoirs and you're fishing for perch, you're quite often using heavier rods, kind of seven, seven to 15 gram or seven to 28 gram. And in, when I'm doing wrasse fishing, that's what I'm using. I'm using seven to 28 gram rods. I'm using 28, 20 pound braid straight through, going straight down to, which you can use 20 or 30 pound braid, but then I've got a 20 pound rubbing leader as well. And I'm using bigger lures because I want to target bigger fish as well. A lot of nine, 10 centimeter lures. Now, Oh, best one, just swam past me. I've got to try for this one, bear with me. Because um, it's gin clear water here, it's low tide. It's low tide, which is brilliant. And it's just swam back the other way. <laughs> it's just swimming along there. I don't know if you can see that cameraman. Okay, well they're cruising around and they're hunting. And the reason for that, is because you low water and then the tide starts to move. And as the tide starts to fill up the gullies, the wrasse and the bass come hunting because they want to go into these gullies and try and grab the first bit of food they can get, the crabs and, and, and uh, uh, the little small fish. There's lots of little baby pollock around us here at the moment. And, and so that's exactly what's going on there. So you're trying to, you're trying to get in there and mimic some, hey? Eh? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in. 
Uh, there we go. And what, are we, what was I saying? Well, that's, that's his mate. <laughs> so this one can be swung out. There we go. There we go. So, is that, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, they have got spikes on the top of them. So do be careful. I find holding them just upside down and keeping them nice and firm. It's gone. <laughs> okay, so there was, uh, there was one and he's just gone straight back in the sea. But that just goes to show that they're patrolling, they're coming in and they're going, working along the edges. Texas rigged, got a little float stop at the top. Bullet weight, one of our floating, the new floating lures. That's, all, that's the second ass I've already had, so you can see that they're, they're working a trick. And it's very much like perch fishing. So they are patrolling the edges. They do come out in the open water, like we obviously you've seen fish moving around. So you can actually sight fish for them as well. So if the conditions are good and, and you've got flat seas, you can get your Polaroids on and you just really watch the water, just like you're looking for carp or you're looking for fish led up, you really watch it. And then you can actually use your lures to sight fish for them, which is absolutely fantastic fun. <laughs> wow, little fish, but boy did that pull. Wow. Just about lift that one out. That was a crazy fish the way it went. Wow. God, it's so strong. We've got a camouflage rash, uh, uh, rash, look. This rash I've just caught is in the new Fox Rage camo. You like? Or the carp camo. Isn't it? Yeah, it's carp camo. <laughs> <laughs> look at the blues in the tail, can you see them? Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Go on. So rats have got very hard mouths. Their mouths look a bit like piranhas' mouths, if you ask me. Um, rows of really sharp teeth. And there he goes, a few limpets there. You've got limpets there, and they literally crunch them off the rocks so they are pretty brutal and I've just had three wrasse on uh, on the lure and it is not even showing any signs of any damage so that's an amazing quality and uh, what I'm going to do is just replace the hook you can sharpen them up but the point's gone on it I don't want to spend loads of time when the tide's coming in sharpening hooks so what I do is have a pack of hooks and I'll just literally put another hook straight on because uh, I've come here to go fishing, not sharpen hooks, and I want to catch fish. So I just literally, good to go, sink that back in there, because it's like a tackle graveyard out there, so we can just tuck inside. Then, I've just got a float stop. I've got these absolutely awesome tungsten weights, which are from Strike King. Take a little bit more off that. And then that is it. I, I, you can vary the, the length you have on this. This is Texas rigging, so you can vary the length that you have the lure. These lures are really buoyant. And I mean really buoyant. They, they literally lift up massively. Um, and I have it about, I have it about there. That works for me in these conditions today, in nice clear water. So I just can have it sitting up a little bit like that and it works really well. Um, and then basically when I pull it, it comes back down and then it slowly lifts back up off the lead. And Ras loved them. Let's go catch some more. <laughs> Massively deep hole there. Yep. There we go, look at that. Beautiful little wrasse. 
just coming out of that hole behind me. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a few more down there as well. Let's see if we can catch another couple. There you go, my friend. There you go. Come on, Ras, out you come. Yeah, oh, come on. Oh, he's off. <laughs> oh, you know, whoa. <laughs> yeah, you know you've lost one when that happens. Wow. So, nice little cast into a deep gully. You want to keep the rod, if you can, at about this sort of angle. Because when you hook a ras, all it wants to do is go back into the kelp where it came from. So if you've got the rod up here, you've got nowhere to go. You need the drag set so tight. You can't believe how, drag, how tight you're setting your drag. And then you need to be having enough lift so that you can actually set that hook and then just pull it out of its hole and try and get it up to mid-water. If you can get them to mid-water, you've got a really good chance of getting them in. Getting them to mid-water can be tricky when they get big. Come on, yep. Come on, come to Benny. <laughs> There it is, and it's a pretty one. Oh, look at the rod, look at the rod. Come on. Yeah, whoo. <laughs> that is so much fun. It might only last for about 10 seconds, but boy, is it fun. Look at that. There you go, beautiful wrasse. Look after them because they might be tough. But they live in a tough world. So if we can make it a little bit better and then enjoy our angling, look after them on the bank and they'll uh, hopefully have a good time under the sea. Beautiful fish, look at that. Whoop, go on then baby. There she goes. Down, gone. So you would think underneath this is a vertical drop, there should be a, that was a tap. That was a tap, that was a ras. Oh, look at that, a camo. <laughs> we have a camo ras in the net. And without that net, I would have been stuck. <laughs> Perfect, let's have a look at it. Woohoo! Here we go, look at this beauty. So you've got to be very careful when you're, when you're rock fish, fishing for wrasse. That net enables me to fish places where you can't pull a fish like this up by, by hand, it's too big, it's, it was dangerous for you, for the fish. You snap the rod, you cut your hand and you damage the fish, so you can't do it. But when you've got that net there, I can just shoot it down, happy days. And then I can, I can also return it the same way as well. So absolutely perfect. And there's literally thousands of fry at my feet, which tells me there's probably gonna be some bass. And definitely I think the rats are gonna be uh, switched on when they see all them. So I'll see if I can catch another one, woohoo. We've come out for a few hours fishing on a good tide. Just fished it for a few hours up, had plenty of fish, small ones, big ones, colourful ones, um, and had some great fun. Rod doubled over, lots of laughs. It's what fishing's all about. When I come ras fishing, I pretty much am a creature of habit because I don't need to change anything because I've done all my trial and error over the years and I use the same tackle now whenever I come. So when I come, two and a half thousand size reel. You can use bait casting reels for that as well, which I do sometimes use on occasions, but for simplicity, fixed balls are absolutely fine. This is a two and a half thousand Prism X, loaded with 20 or 30 pound braid, straight through to 15 or 20 pound fluorocarbon. Now, 
It might sound heavy, but this is a rubbing leader because your braid won't last two seconds on the rocks. So you have at least kind of three or four foot of fluorocarbon so that when the rafts are in close, you can literally bully them out um, and, you've got them, and you've got that reliability of the tough fluorocarbon there to stop you from getting cut off. So that's really, really important. And then goes down and you've got one of our float stops. You've got a Strike King. This one here is half ounce, so it's 14 gram. And that is ample for casting as far as you'd need to cast, even though a lot of it is very close in. Um, we do them in various sizes as well. Um, and then it goes down to the um, offset hook. And on there, we've got one of our floating creature baits. I've pretty much stuck with this one all day because sometimes when I look at a lure in the margins and I see how it reacts and I can see the clarity in the water and you can see how the fish are responding to it, there's no need to change. So I did try, I think, once or twice a couple of other lures, but this was the colour of the day. It doesn't mean on another day there's not going to be a different colour. This is the nine centimetre one. If you use a smaller one, you can probably pick out lots of smaller fish, but I was purposely targeting bigger fish today. So I go for a larger lures and hopefully that will pick out the bigger fish for a bigger meal. So, um, and that's what it does do for me anyway. That's the kind of basics of, of what I do and what I use to go lure fishing. Um, seven to 28 gram rod. Quite a fast, very tippy action where it's got a lot of power um, in the midsection and even more in the blanks. So I am literally can absolutely very, very fast, very, very quick. I can just straight into them and then put a lot of power very fast into them, just pull them out of the kelp um, and, and in between the gullies because it's those first few seconds when you're ass fishing which are absolutely brutal. The fight's probably 10 seconds, 15 seconds, but Boy, does it feel like 10, 15 minutes when your heart starts going when you hook a decent ras. So um, yeah, that's it. Travel ultra light. I carry uh, one of these uh, one of these bags for a lot of my lure fishing because it means my hands are always totally free. It means I can rock hock, uh, jump off the rocks as I move about. Um, I've got the extending landing net, which is fantastic because it means I can fish swim where you've got a deep drop off and I'd never get a fish in normally, but I can quite safely catch the fish and put the fish back without going and putting myself in any sort of danger. So the new nets we've got are absolutely amazing for ras fishing and fishing off piers and harbours and things. Um, yeah, they're a, a really, really good edge. Look at that for a brilliant fish to close the show on. Wow, that is an absolute belter. Fantastic. That's a good fish. There we go, we'll look at that for a beautiful rash. Looks like it's been hand painted with all those dots on it. Amazing fight, fantastic take as it smashes the lure. And I don't think there's any better way to spend a day away from the mad world we live in with a mate catching fish, rod doubled over, beautiful scenery. What more do you want in the world we live in? Fantastic. If you're getting out on the rocks after last, stay safe and have fun. Let's slip this one back. So you can tell by looking around the terrain when you're ras fishing is brutal okay so they love sharp rock faces they love gullies they love kelp so that naturally means that you're going to be fishing um, and walking on wet rocks on rocks with it's got kelp all over them and that's really really dangerous so i think there's always got to be a few kind of uh, rules of thumb when you go ras fishing to make sure that you keep yourself safe um, and i'm going to run through them now 
One of them, I would say, never go ras fishing on your own on the rocks. Any type of fishing on your own on the rocks is dangerous, really. Quite often, you won't get phone signal because you're so close um, to the to the edge of the country that you literally there's there's nothing there. You're behind the signal, so you you haven't got that. So you haven't got the phone signal. So you're not really safe on your own. Um, and if you slip, trip, or fall, you need someone there to be able to help you. Um, and the chances of slip slipping, tripping and falling on wet rocks is quite high. So ankle boots are really, really important. Trainers, they're not really good enough, okay? You need to wear really high quality ankle boots. If your ankle goes over, you've got so much protection from ankle boots. Um, so I would never ever rock fish without good quality ankle boots. Never would I ever do it. Um, so go with a friend. Never go on your own, wear ankle boots and use common sense. If you're going to go down or you're going to try and put a fish back, just always be aware that not all the waves are the same. Quite often you get a freak wave. Nine times out of ten that will happen when you go close to the water's edge. So don't take any risks like that. Just assess everything you do. Little mini risk assessments in your head. Is that dangerous? Could it go wrong? If it is, don't do it. You know, you've got to use a lot of common sense in the world we live in and especially when you go rock fishing for wrasse. So my advice is to be careful, make sure you look after yourself, look after the person who's with you, go out, have a great day's fishing and stay safe.